impact craters can expose the subsurface in a way that no rover is equipped to do. So the biggest crater accessible to Perseverance in many months looked like a good exploration target until it disappeared from view. On this episode of Mars Guy, the Opportunity rover scored a cosmic hole-in-one when its airbag landing system rolled into a small crater subsequently named Eagle. The layered outcrops of rock it discovered there, which were unrecognizable from orbit, proved to be a goldmine of information about the history of water on Mars. Opportunity departed the tiny Eagle crater after months of investigation and spent nearly 15 years driving from one crater to the next ever larger one, each providing a deeper look into the subsurface and yielding ever more profound scientific discoveries until Opportunity finally succumbed to death from a global dust storm that cut off its source of solar power. In the previous episode, I presented the arrival of Perseverance at the rocky ridge called Pico Trichino on the rim of Jezero Crater. Tucked up against the base of the ridge is an impact crater about the size of a small house. Perseverance has encountered notably few craters along its route, so I was interested to see what this one might reveal. On the ground, the view is dominated by the rocky ridge of Pico Turquino and the boulders shutting off it. Here's Mars Guy for scale. Somewhere in this view is a house-sized crater. I was surprised to see how hard it is to recognize. It is easy to recognize other features in this scene that are visible from orbit. This lone rock literally stands out both on the ground and in the image from high rise which is a telescope in orbit around Mars that can resolve rocks as small as a basketball. This one is about a meter across, which I know thanks to the measuring tool built into the location map posted on the NASA Perseverance website. There's a larger rock perched on the edge of the crater, which is the biggest rock at the base of the ridge. It's clearly visible on the ground as well, and it's on the opposite side of the crater relative to Perseverance, so that means the crater is about here in this scene. Needless to say, it's not exactly popping out of the landscape, or maybe that's popping into it. It's now clear that erosion and infill have nearly erased this crater. When fresh, the crater was probably about two meters deep, based on the relationship between crater depth to diameter, that's been documented for Mars. But wind and sand and time have conspired to plane off any raised rim it may have had and filled in its bowl-shaped hole in the ground. Perseverance got a look back at this spot after it moved on. This view tells the same story. The small outlying rock is still visible from here, as is the larger one on the edge of the crater. In between is a crater that we only know of from the orbital view. The fact that it's still visible from orbit means that there's still a hint of a bowl here. The story of all craters starts with an instantaneous formation, the shortest geologic event possible, followed by a long, drown-out demise. On Earth, this demise is accelerated by falling rain and flowing water, and even the recycling of Earth's crust through plate tectonics. On Mars, for most of its history, The agents of erosion have acted much more slowly, but have managed to render a little crater at the base of Pico Trichino invisible to a passing rover. 